National. This is my spiritual father. Welcome, Dad. Thank you, Gina. I'm going happy to be here to support you and uh, the ministry here that we're broadcasting from. This is Truth and Love Ministry International. You can find us at www.tnlmi.org, where we take all your prayer requests and, and such. But uh, if you haven't noticed, he's got a little bit of an accent, don't you, Dad? Well, yes, but I just became an American citizen about four or five months ago, and I'm working on what kind of an accent I should have now. <laughs> yeah, he's working on his accent. But he's Australian, if you haven't figured that out. All of our Aussie mates out there, good day, mate. We're so excited that you're tuning in today. Um, we received, Tom Brian, so many uh, countless um, calls, emails, uh, and donations from Australia. And so how exciting that the Holy Spirit spoke to both of our hearts to have our spiritual father. And we also want to give props to our spiritual mommy, Eleanor Dewberry, is in the house. You can't see her wave. I think she should stand up real quick. I think she's come up behind us real quick, give a wave to all the folks on Come TV. On, uh, and I, I just real quick, Mom, what was that? What was the group that you were in? Uh, the Superbs. She was in the Superbs. Check her out. Is she not superb? Look at this. <laughs> like a new wineskin. The Holy Ghost has poured oil into this woman. She's been like my mother. She is like my mother. You know, we've been forsaken by some of our mothers and fathers on the earth, correct? But God brings us spiritual parents, and I'm so grateful. So if you're wondering how this ministry is surviving, who keeps Pastor Brian and myself accountable, who encourages us, loves us, admonishes us in the word, thanks, Mom, you have just met our spiritual parents. And if you go to their website at DewberryMinistries.org, you'll learn some more about them and their books, their CDs. You're going to want them after you hear this message today. But there's a lot to get into, and I don't want to take up too much time because... We are going to deal with some major issues, Dad, that are um, plaguing well, the world, but specifically the body of Christ. You and Mom uh, do a lot of counseling, and you're seeing a lot of situations with post-traumatic stress disorder, grief, bipolar, schizophrenia. So I think I'm just going to let you take the mic a little bit and, and tell us what's going on, Dad. What are you seeing in the body of Christ with medications? And why people aren't getting free at the altar? What's what's happening? Well, I, <clears throat> excuse me. I think what's happening today uh, that if we make a study, uh, we find more people do not know how to handle their anxieties, their depressions, their fears, all these things that Jesus just mentioned, and yet they're common in the body of Christ. Here in the United States alone, as far as I know from medical records. That is, 22% of our nation here are on more than five psychiatric drugs a day. Now, the Bible has an answer for all this, and so we started our ministry way back 15-something uh, years ago. And uh, our ministry is based on Isaiah 58. The true past of God to break the bands of wickedness, undo the heavy burdens, and let the oppressed go free. It wasn't passing from food. It was fulfilling and, and uh, uh, sharing uh, our, uh, our um, relationship of the Lord. We declared to be righteous by faith. Well, everything that's in the scripture, like, uh, uh, like um, faith and our righteousness, has to show works to prove that we're really serving the Lord in that dimension. But you said something really poignant right there. I think it's going to blow a lot of theologians away right now and a lot of religious beliefs is you just said Isaiah 58 isn't strictly about fasting from food. So no, there's freedom no. in, in hearing this message right now. Well, I think, you know, what happened way back in those years, and I've been in ministry now for 50-something uh, ministry full time, the Lord called us way back in those early years to uh, minister the counterculture. Well, how do you break into a culture that doesn't believe anything about the Bible, uh, had rejected family, had rejected everything we know to be moral? How do you come to break into that kind of community to share the gospel of Jesus Christ? And so that was our great burden. Mm. And the Lord took us to uh, uh, Job 29. And you have to understand that you can't just speak a word 
and they shall have the right to speak into that person's life. Mm. And that's what the word admonition means. Uh, the policy of his ministry was to admonish the people. But that word means you earn the right to be able to speak into that person's life. So what the Lord showed us in Australia in those days, and I said the King Challenge ministry up in Sydney, Australia, the Lord called us for this special group that we were to minister to. So he told us, well, how do you get authority? How do you get authority to speak into government? Mm, how do you have authority word. to speak in families or anybody else's life? And so the Lord took us into Job 29. And this is righteousness in, uh, worked out in our birth. Uh, Job said he became eyes to the blind, mm. feet to the lame. Mm. Uh, the, he became a father to the fatherless. So you have to learn the right to be able to minister to in him. And you've got to find out what the felt need of that person is individually, family-wise, or if they belong to some culture. But in those days, way back in Australia, it was for the days where there was a lot of drugs and so forth. But in the area we went to, our, our state government there, if anybody went to a medical clinic that they found out was on some form of drug, they had to be reported to the police. And there was a lot of people who were suffering uh, hepatitis, uh, I mean, free. They wouldn't go to medical help because they were afraid. So this was a crisis in our nation because the, the counterculture would go from one city to one place to another. So I called our health department up in that state and said, look, we stand in danger of having a, a, a commonwealth um, plague of uh, an epidemic. Uh, mm -hmm. epidemic mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And uh, will you give me permission to be able to treat these young people with a doctor in our center and not be reported to the police? And they gave us that permission. And so we began to do exactly what the scripture said. We began to meet a felt need. The ultimate uh, end of that was that the government gave us permission. If we referred anybody to a hospital that had some medical need, and if they were on drugs, they wouldn't be reported to the police. That opened the doorway for us to minister the whole counterculture movement. And we followed that simple little principle that was set out in, in Job 29. I became eyes of the blind, feet of the lame, the widow's heart I caused to sing for joy, I became a father to the father. Now this is righteousness, clothing itself with God's righteousness, and showing how to meet the need and open the door. And that yes. was the beginning of our ministry. Amen. So what I'm hearing, I love this, because uh, our last message was strike the shepherd and scatter the sheep. And the Lord is bringing his remnant back to him. He's raising up shepherds. Now, Dad Dewberry doesn't know that I spoke on this uh, last week with you guys. This is so beautiful because we spoke about that communion and that Last Supper was not just about communion, but it was the chief shepherd being an example, um, Dr. Dewberry, to his disciples that the only way you can follow in my footsteps and lead is you have to break your body. You've got to be broken for the people and for the souls of men that you're going to serve. So what I'm hearing here is because he's had such great success, am I talking financial success, the success the way the world would dictate it? No, I'm talking people literally being set free because he met felt needs, right, Brian? Pastor Brian, he served the body of Christ. You've witnessed this with when you came into the ministry. That's the first thing you said. What would you say about um, Pastor Dewberry? Um, he's just, he's a humble, but uh, powerful man of God. And uh, just his story, his testimony was a testimony to me. And yes. I could relate to him. Yeah. So as children, we love to submit to this and hear this kind of teaching. And so we're excited. So please continue on, Dad, about the kind of um, mental illnesses that you were seeing in this region and, and just what God has shown you the answers. Well, see, I was uh, leading our youth movement uh, for the Assemblies of God in our, in our state. And uh, as well as we have the Teen Challenge Ministry, I've reached a lot of these counterculture people. And uh, But the first person the Lord sent to us when he challenged us was a, a paranoid schizophrenic. Now, I'm a farm boy. I was raised on a farm. I know all about shepherding, which I thank God for, by the way. Mm -hmm. But it taught me how to lead sheep instead of trying to drive them. Oh, yeah. hope everybody heard that one. That's it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Jean, I think this is an important issue 
Because you see, if, if you're a shepherd, mm. you've got to walk in front of your sheep. You can't drive your sheep or you scatter them. Amen. But a goat you can't lead. You have to drive a goat. Oh. And see, I learned, I learned that that mm -hmm. in the very beginning from my farming experience. Yes. But anyway, so the, the first person the Lord sent to us was this young man, wasn't a Christian, had been told if he ever was uh, committed to an institution again, he would never be released. Now, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I didn't come from a medical background. I knew nothing about schizophrenia mm -hmm. or any of these things. Now, I'm talking way back in the, in the early 60s now. I said, how do I deal with this law? And he said, well, there's biblical principles. Mm. He said, in the natural, you have laws of gravity. You have laws governing every chemical uh, compound there is. There's spiritual laws. And he said, if you can find out what spiritual law was violated, then you can, you can reach into this young family and see him transform. What a challenge. What a ch and so yeah. what happened, the Lord showed us what it was. What had happened was his father was what we call a perfectionist. Right? Now mm -hmm. if a perfectionist does not do something quite perfect, he not only rejects what he does, he rejects himself. Now we put that orientation on his son. So his son could never, 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 never ever measure up to his father's expectation. And what happened is the one of the commandments when it says in Colossians 3.21, Fathers, don't provoke your children to anger. Yeah. I'm quoting from the Amplified Version. Yes. Don't cause them to be depressed. Don't ruin their spirit. So when we put pressure on children, we violate that divine principle, that divine law. Mm. So his, uh, this father put that bit that uh, expectation on his son so his son could never quite man uh, measure up to his father's expectation so what happened he got rejected mm -hmm. and out of that pain and out of the rejection that came from his father he began to split personality so this has to minister to so many of our listeners right now are you loving this hmm. if those of you who are watching us on podcast you probably see pastor brian and i okay what did we talk about in our last um, our last segment you don't be careful who you're listening to you, to the degree that you study and measure what you hear will be the degree in which of the fruit you'll receive from what you heard right so you don't just receive it and not study and, and, and look at what he, we're going through our Bibles with dr. Harold Dewberry right now like wow I'm getting more and more from what he's saying I hope you are too please make sure you're calling in um, to triple eight five two two. That's one nine zero nine triple eight five. Excuse me, I, I beg your pardon. One triple eight nine zero nine ten fifty. Thank you. And we want to hear from the people. We want to help you guys. He has so much information to teach, and we're, we're going to get to that. But I also want to um, let you know if you go to his website at dewberryministries.org, this awesome apostle of God. We're talking. He's been tried, true, and tested. He has so many books like God has caused me to forget, feed my sheep, feed my lambs, in search of material possessions, anxiety, depression, shame, anger, grief. I know that no one relates to any of that. So no one's going to call in or write for those books, I can imagine, right? There's so many books and CDs in their bookstore on their website. Or you can just see us at, you know, visit us at teenlmi.org or call us at 951 833-8190. Why am I plugging this? Why am I saying this? I want to make sure you have the information after the show to find us, to find the shepherds that won't strike the sheep, right? But will lead the sheep into safe pastures. So, um, Dr. Dewberry, I'm hearing the soul has been wounded from the natural parents that we were birthed to. Right, and I think that's one of the major issues we're facing today. <laughs> Because we don't understand there's a difference between a person's temperament and a person's personality. Now the personality comes from the Latin word persona, which was, means an actor that had one actor, but they dare a dip, uh, wear a different mask to change roles. Uh -huh. And so most people are they basing their life on what they call their personality. Let me give you an example. Mm -hmm. One of our leading specialists in Sydney, very successful. I mean, business-wise and medical. He called me up over the phone and said, Harold, I just released myself out of an institution. I said, what for? You've got a record of being one of the most successful medical men in this city. Mm. And he said, well, 
I, I know I'm successful that way, but I'm empty. Oh. What am yes. I? What?